All right, welcome back to the Dental Domination Podcast. This is Believe It or Not, Episode 12, and I am Dan Bryan. I am uh, the co-founder of Dentalscapes. We're an online marketing agency specifically for dental practices. And I'm really excited uh, today to bring in two special guests. Um, this will be our first joint interview, I suppose, uh, here on, on the podcast. Um, but one name that uh, listeners will recognize uh, from previous episodes, Jessica Martin. She is the founder and CEO of Martin Management uh, and the co-owner of Martin Dental Spa in Wisconsin. She's a healthcare consultant really focused in on patient experience. And so uh, according to her, she says it's her mission to take the dread out of dentistry. And she knows her stuff. Her husband is a dentist and, uh, uh, you know, she's actually had a lot of experience and has talked quite a bit about implementing elements of spa dentistry and, and has really transformed her practice in that way. And I'm also joined today by uh, Dr. Matthew Norton. Dr. Norton is a workplace leadership and culture coach, and he has a background in chiropractic work, but he actually specializes now in helping dentists uh, with practice management, leadership development, team-based care, you name it. Uh, and I'm really excited today to dig into some of the problems that Jessica and Dr. Norton are solving for dentists and their teams and a really unique um, uh, and innovative coaching program that they put together to offer to dentists that I think is, is something that's going to make waves within the industry. And I'm really excited to dig into it today. But I have talked way too much. It's something I'm really good at, by the way. Um, so I want to kick it over, though, first to Jessica to tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Um, and then uh, Dr. Norton, want to do the same thing for you and get your background and, and hear a little bit more about your experience, what brought you to this place, and then we'll we'll dig into it. So uh, go for it, Jessica. Yeah, thanks, Dan. So excited to be back. I am a school psychologist. For those of you that haven't listened to the prior episodes, I happen to be married to a dentist and I got sort of uh, sucked into dentistry. It's rough, I isn't it, Jessica? <laughs> it is. I am too. <laughs> There's a, that's a whole other podcast too. Um, but yes, yeah. my dental spouse got sucked into the practice back in 2014, realized how much psychology there is in dentistry, transformed our practice to become much more profitable, uh, much more in demand, helped really address patient anxiety, and then spiraled into a consulting company to help other practices be more profitable, um, grow the business and help more patients. So that's the quick nutshell on me. Absolutely. And those previous episodes are available um, at dentalscapes.com uh, if anyone is interested in, in checking those out. And you can get them wherever you get your podcast as well. Thank you so much uh, for that intro. Dr. Norton, um, what's going on with you these days? Well, uh, the background journey, as you mentioned, it began uh, 33 years if, uh, in my private practice as a doctor of chiropractic, and uh, my heart and soul went into those 33 years. There were so many miracles that I saw happen before me that led to me spending uh, quite a bit of spare time writing this book, Where Does It Hurt? Amazing. And that where that led was a change in direction that I hadn't really intended. I'd always been patient focused. That got me in media, got me speaking engagements that then got me in front of dentists in addition to oh, I, chiropractors I'm sorry. in the audience. And, and, <laughs> I'm just kidding. And, yeah. And then I had, uh, you know, then I started having first dental clients and then I got invited in, I was doing a podcast and I got in, I was introduced to somebody in dental that I interviewed that led to more. So it was this, this kind of uh, journey that I had not intended that brought me to this point. Now yeah. I mostly serve dentists, uh, as I mentioned to you before we started, that there's nothing industry specific really about what I do, where there are leaders, where there are team members. I, I, that's where I come in and, and help. Wherever people I, exist. Wherever people exist. I'm, I'm in, in, a, in a way, I mean, you introduced me as a relationship and workplace culture coach, which is true. A lot of times awesome. I see myself as a relationship coach in business. Awesome. Love it. Love it. And, you know, at Dentalscapes here, we're really big into company culture. We actually set out to build this agency, not so much uh, necessarily because we were just super adamant about starting an agency. Of course, it's it's something we're passionate about as well, but we really wanted to build a company with the culture um, that, that really created an environment where people wanted to come to work. And um, it's something that I'm really excited about. So I'm, I'm definitely, um, you know, eager to dig into it today, but I'm going to kick it back to you, Jessica. What, what kind of brings you to here today and 
what sort of fostered the collaboration between you and Dr. Norton, your consulting uh, program and, and coaching program and his expertise within culture and practice management and workplace leadership? How did you two come together? And um, if I can ask a two part question, what was really the the dominant pain point that you two decided to solve for dentists? Yeah, that's great. So we met, gosh, it'll be probably, it'll be two years in May, I think it is, Matthew. And I was invited into um, his group called the Dental Experts Network. He hosts a um, online group for dental professionals. And that's how we met. And I think we just found a likeness in our passions and our, um, you know, our dedication to serving the dental industry and started having conversations about what each of us were bringing and what we were hoping to bring to the dental industry. And, you know, we just kept talking and enjoying one another's company and really diving into how we solve problems. And I think the, when you mention, you know, what is the biggest problem that we come together to solve? I really think it's, it's putting positivity into dentistry, whether that's yeah. you know, from the team dynamic culture standpoint that Matthew captures or um, on my end, whether it's increasing new patient numbers or bettering the patient experience, our, our main goal is really to elevate the practice and to make this team really great and feel great. And for patients, that's amazing too. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, in so many ways, you know, and, and like Dr. Norton, you said, um, this crosses all industries, essentially. It's, it's, it's applicable for any business, uh, any environment in which people are operating and interacting, I guess. Um, but one thing that I'm always struck by is how the culture of the workplace really impacts those that it serves. Um, and, and that culture is, is really sort of contagious in a way. So, um, Dr. Norton, I'm going to kick it over to you. Um, what would you add to, you know, what Jessica said about the problem that you all are, are seeking to solve and, um, what first got you passionate about, about solving these issues? Uh, briefly, what first got me passionate and what still drives me, I'll just quick story, uh, back after I, after I'd been married for, uh, just, two years, eight months, um, and was not very far into my practice career. My, I had just adopted my wife's twin uh, five-year-old daughters, and she had a heart attack and died. So I, oh I was I'm 30 so years old, had twin five-year-olds, and did not have the person in my life that was the reason I had these daughters. So in going through that grieving process, it was really a specific day that I really kind of called out, you know, called out to God. And I said, if, if I could have a life that felt like it was worth living again, that I will dedicate the rest of my life to helping other people get free to be able to, to clarify their purpose and to be able to live that out. So yeah. I really, ever since then, that was all the way back in 1987. And since that point, that's what's driven, that's what drove my practice. That's the same thing that drives my coaching. So wherever there are leaders and teams, like we were talking about, there are, there are innumerable ways to get stuck, right? Yeah. To, and people feeling frustrated, like we can't seem to move forward. And the, the greatest expense that in a dental office is usually the, their team is, is the payroll that they're paying to yeah. their staff. And, and it doesn't have to just be the greatest expense. It could be the greatest asset. It just yeah. usually isn't. And so that's what, that's, what's driving me is to help that be the case, to help draw the connection between improving leadership, improving the emotional agility of the people. How yeah. does that connect to profitability? So I've been work I'm work on the human side in leadership and workplace and look through the lens of assessments to be able yeah. to personalize that. And then I realized that what a perfect match with Jessica, because she's not really doing those things, but I'm not really focusing on patient experience, mm -hmm. on office optimization, on insurance liberation and those sorts of things. So yeah. to me, I felt like together we could solve most of the workplace challenges. 100%. And of course, we're, we're living in a time of unprecedented change and transformation within oral health care. And, and, you know, to your point about 
um, the team being the greatest expense, but also a, potentially the greatest asset. You know, obviously workforce challenges today are so pervasive within the industry that um, I think this is something that that would be um, applicable for so many practices out there. Uh, but Jessica, I, I wanted to ask you, so I'm going to kind of tee it up here um, with, with a little bit of a scenario. So say I'm a uh, private practice dentist, uh, dentist owner, and I'm coming to you and uh, you know, I've, I've come across your business. I'm looking to grow my practice, of course, as most dentists are. I'm looking to increase my new patient numbers and, and drive those appointments. Um, I'm, you know, obviously, you know, uh, confident in my clinical ability and I'm excited about the care that I offer uh, my patients, but I'm not necessarily sure and I'm not necessarily convinced that uh, my practice is offering necessarily the best, uh, most exceptional patient experience. Um, and, and maybe to uh, Dr. Norton's point, my team, uh, you know, may be, uh, you know, just sort of, you know, going with the motions. Um, and uh, that's neither their, their fault nor mine entirely. There's a lot of contributing factors. But I'm coming to you because you two have... Uh, put forth this program, this six-month coaching program designed to address those pain points. Uh, where do we start? And, uh, you know, typically in the client journey with you, how does the engagement get started? And, and what's sort of the first step that you and Dr. Der Norton would take in, in terms of working with me? Well, there's a couple of things. So before a conversation occurs with me, right on my website, I actually have a scorecard, which was inspired by Dr. Norton. He also has a scorecard on his website. But what that scorecard does is it helps the doctor or the office manager, whoever's the leader in this situation, kind of go through some pointed questions to see, you know, what are the biggest priorities for the practice? Is it patient experience? Is it getting out of insurance networks? Is it systems optimization? What is it in the terms of the programs that I offer? And that's a nice starting point for people to, to see, you know, where do we focus first? Sometimes that part gets skipped and I get connected to the, to, to the doctor and we just have a conversation about, you know, what are the most pressing challenges right now? And what I mm -hmm. love in terms of working with Matthew on these cases is that almost always, if we can empower the team to be their best and using strengths yeah. and using assessments to really help them understand one another as well as themselves, well, then they're more excited to make these positive changes for patients as well as for, you know, the business of, of the office. So um, there, there's a motivational piece that I was missing in my programming without working with Dr. Norton that I think is so crucial to really moving teams forward and maximizing yeah. the whole experience, you know, from for the patients, but also for for the dental team to, to be. Yeah, better. and you you have a background yourself, of course, in managing your husband's practice and and growing a team and managing a team. Where do you start when there may be a, a motivational issue or uh, you know team members that may not feel. Um, you know, fully fulfilled in the work that they're doing, or um, maybe not confident that, um, you know, they're, they're in the right place or offering patients the right experience. Where do you start with that? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, full transparency, we work with Dr. Norton, our team works directly with him. And I love that because I get to see, you know, we work together, um, working for clients, but then our practice is also utilizing his expertise to work through some of those challenges. Through That's COVID, great. we have had more turnover than we've ever seen in our practice. And yeah. it, was, it was really discouraging, you know, from yeah. a leadership. And you're not alone. It was like, what are we doing wrong? Who? What is wrong with us as people or as leaders um, to cause people to leave the practice? It gets to be personal at times. And so, yeah. um, you know, working with a professional like Dr. Norton has really helped to pick apart like what... Mm -hmm what pieces maybe we were contributing to some of that turnover and how can we make improvements on that? But then also making sure we have the right people in the right seats and making yeah, sure that absolutely. our team is fulfilled in what they're doing along the way. And so that's been a, that's been a work in progress that we're still, we're still in process doing with Dr. Norton. Understood. So Dr. Norton, when you come into a practice like Jessica and her husband's, what are some of the signs or the indicators that you look for in terms of assessing um, maybe the, the, the health of the team, uh, for lack of a better word. So uh, Jessica mentioned the scorecard that she has and that I have one as well. So I call it, I call mine, the people performance scorecard that gives, uh, scores in four different categories, leadership, performance, team performance, hiring, and purpose. And so most of the time when people are reaching out to me, it's 
more often than not, it's a team issue. The leader, the leadership, the owner or leadership sees team members falling short of what they want, or there's excessive drama, uh, there's too much turnover, the the stress is high, uh, and it's you know it's it's getting in the way of production profitability in some way. Yeah. Uh, so, but where is the issue? Most of the time. A key part of that begins with leadership. I did a webinar a while back that's called Visionary Leader Peak Success Begins with You, the First Hire. So I use assessments. These assessments Jessica mentioned, I've been using assessments 26 years. I've I developed my own several years ago after all those years of use it, being certified in other people's approaches, developed my own. So I have a core four. So we're looking at behavior, inspiration, cognitive styles and emotional agility. So mm. if I if I have those four assessments on the leadership, on the teams, I can guide everything from best hiring for role and team fit to to personalized growth and development opportunities to how to enhance communication and conflict resolution and communication and conflict issues are almost universal. So in terms yeah. of symptom. I mean, we're not communicating well, there's collisions between different people and we don't know what to do about it. So yeah. it just gives us the insight. And also because inspiration sources says, what is it that matters to people? I have seven different options where we can say, how do we tailor it to engage, to increase the engagement with any particular team member, their buy-in, because we know those driving values that matter to them. And we're often not speaking to that. Yeah, hundred percent. It all really starts with the team, and you know that obviously translates to the patient experience. You know how how do you two assess uh, you know the patient experience when you walk into a practice? I know you guys do on site visits. Do you um, what what do you do to assess the the perspective of the patient when it comes to um, care delivery in, in a practice? And I'm going to turn it over to you, Jessica. Yeah. So when I'm on site with a dental practice, I definitely love to see them in action with patients. I'm looking for, well, I'll walk through the whole building as well and just kind of look for things that I would notice as a new patient that they might have overlooked, which is very common. We can't see our own clutter typically, but I'm looking for, you know, how they greet patients when they arrive, how long patients are waiting, what is the process for collecting any necessary paperwork or any, any information they might need from the patient before the appointment. What does it look like when the patient is sat in the dental chair? What is the interaction like with the doctor and the rest of the team? And then what yeah. does that checkout process look like? And then of course, as I'm there, I get to hear numerous phone calls and all sorts of little things that, you know, that are happening simultaneously in the practice at any one given time. And that's, what's challenging is that, you know, if we could just be like, okay, I'm really focused on this one person, I'm going to give them amazing care. I mean, I don't want to say that's easy, but that's mm -hmm. one thing, but then there's like, two people on hold and then the doctor's running behind and, you know, real life makes things a little more messy. So I always um, enjoy also getting to see how the team is handling adversity and working through challenges because, you know, patients can feel that they can feel when the energy shifts, they can feel the stress of the team. If there is a, if there is stress and anxiety. So um, it is fun to just, you know, kind of, I'm not a fly on the wall. They know I'm there. They're usually on their best behavior, but still there's always little nuances and little insights I can provide. And working with Matthew too, it's great to know, you know, each individual team member with assessments, I can, I know them more in depth than just having met them or having to get yeah. to know them over Zoom. So having that background information about what drives them, what their cognitive you know, strengths are, what they lead with um, is really helpful as well in terms of if I need to offer a suggestion or, you yeah. know, offers a correction kind of knowing who I'm working with is, is helpful. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. You know, one thing that we talk a lot about within the industry and, and with dentists, our clients uh, and others is that, you know, dental school of course does not really focus on uh, training uh, future providers to manage a business. And, you know, we also know uh, that just <laughs> due to genes and other factors, not all of us are charismatic leaders. So what happens when you have a um, exceptionally talented clinician who doesn't necessarily know how to lead a team? Uh, and, you know, as a result, um, maybe the, the team suffers because of that. Maybe the patient experience suffers because there's not that cohesion that you need within the practice. What do you do uh, when, say, you work with a dentist who 
you know, self-avowedly says, you know, I'm just, I'm not really a natural born leader. Where do I start and what can I do? And Dr. Norton, I'll, I'll turn that yeah. one over to you. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, and you're right. Not only lack of business uh, training in school, but definitely where was, where did the experience come to be a leader of people? And now we've got a bunch of people to lead in a dental office. So yeah. you're right. It is a challenge. And so I believe anybody can lead and I believe anybody, whether you're charismatic or not, that you are, you'll be a different type of leader than somebody else. So I think one of the first keys is to know yourself, to know your style, to know your strengths, to know where you're not as strong and to be able to see what, to be able to get clearer on what does, what does uh, productive, strong, uh, inspirational leadership look like for me as an individual and yeah. then the other part is who is it that i'm leading what can i know about those people am i willing to see a dynamic it's not just thinking i'm seeing them but i'm seeing them through the lens of who i am but also i can have insider information just like insider information of all the technology in dental that helps me see the patient needs more clearly, right? And how I can deliver those. I've got better technology and I can, I can teach about what the need is for any particular oh. condition. In the same way, I can get tailored information to improve the dynamic between myself and any individual team member to be able to inspire them better, right? My company is called People Plus Purpose. And so oh, I I'm, I'm a lot, a lot of it is like, are we clear on where we're going? A lot of the doctors have not painted, they've not owned or painted a clear vision as to where the destination is and or what the mission is that's driving us. And yeah. because of that, they're not inspiring people to get on board at the highest level. And then yeah. also we're different. So we have communication breakdowns. Yeah. Dental, oh, I'm sorry, Jessica, go for it. No, I was just no, going to say. <laughs> Go <ahead>. <laughs> I was just going to say at Dentalscapes, you know, we operate on the, what they call the entrepreneurial operating system or EOS. And, you know, something that is so core to um, that system is really setting the vision um, up front and making sure that, you know, every, every team member is bought into that. And, you know, so we do things like at the, the beginning of every strategy call and proposal we put together, we really lead with the core values and kind of define what those are for not, not just ourselves, but also our clients. So I love that. I love um, what you said, Dr. Norton, about setting the vision and, and really defining where a practice wants to go. And, um, you know, I also believe like what you said, that uh, leadership does not necessarily need to be charismatic. There's so many different styles and also leadership can be learned. It doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. have to be innate. And there right. are so many different types of leadership that I think uh, sometimes we all, and in fact, in including myself, um, sell ourselves short sometimes and, mm -hmm. and don't feel like we can truly uh, you know, step up and, and be that leader. But, but I do think, you know, absolutely what you're saying is true. And, Jessica, and the down, I, and the down, and the down, real quick on the downside, the downside of that is people then abdicate the responsibility to be leaders yes. if they think they have to be a certain type of leader. So I yeah. think that's Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Jessica, I cut you off. No, that's okay. I was going to just add that in, in regard to the patient experience, the dentist doesn't need to be the charismatic be all end all individual necessarily if they are that's great but that's that's the other point of having a team that's stepped into their strengths and having people doing things for the practice that that are that come more naturally to them um you know you have somebody in the front that's great at welcoming people and that's got that warm cheerful yeah. optimistic personality that's that's going to lead and be the face of the initial interactions with the patient that's important the other piece of it is, you know, those where... qualities may not be able to be taught so easily. Um, <laughs> those ones are more, more innate. Right? Yes. Agreed. But if you know what you're looking for when you're hiring, I think it's important, you know, to be looking for those qualities Absolutely. for those specific roles to round out some of the, um, the other personalities that maybe are necessary for really good clinical dentistry. The other piece of it is if we um, can teach teams amenities to put in place to relax the patient, to calm the patient. We can understand the psychological state the patient's walking in with and put some really simple pieces in place so that the doctor doesn't have to be as sparkly and shiny and, you know, rolling in with unicorns and rainbows, right? The patient's yeah. already feeling really good and calm and comfortable. Now the doctor really can focus on really great clinical dentistry and not have to 
lead with as much charisma if that make, if that makes sense so that it doesn't necessarily need to be um you know the doctor doesn't feel have to feel compelled to have those qualities to run a really amazing practice if we can put other supports in place to yeah. compensate yeah. So we've talked a lot about assessment. We've talked about kind of knowing oneself in terms of developing leadership and uh, managing the team, setting the vision, some of those things that are truly foundational and important. Um, I want to pivot here um, while we still have a few minutes to talk a little bit about the coaching program itself that you two have put together. So what is um, what does the program look like in practice and uh, how does someone get started and, and what sort of the journey uh, that you take uh, take dentist owners on throughout that. Matthew, do you want to start? Who do you, who do you want to direct that to? <laughs> go, for I, go for yeah, it, go for it, Dr. Norton. Yeah, I mean, we can, so I, I think I've shared about a lot of what my contribution is. Let me just say that part of the reason that this, this collaboration came to pass is that I realized how much more powerful my work can be if I have somebody like Jessica, if I have Jessica, not somebody like Jessica, if I have Jessica being able to provide the needed front office optimization to be able to focus on that patient experience, to be able to, to when offices want to move away from so much insurance dependency, which requires thing, everything to be functioning at a higher level, if you're going to thrive in a less insurance dependent world, that this was perfect. So we're, we're bringing these things together. Uh, we have a, a, a page. I don't know if sharing screen is, is a possibility. If you just I'm going to actually oh. throw the, the, uh, the links into the show notes so folks can access it. Um, if you want to, you know, let people know where they can find it, but I'm definitely definitely going to share it with folks too. Yeah. So I'm um, people, if, if they want to go to people plus purpose.com uh, forward slash Norton Martin program, that's where they can find, that's the landing page where they can find the details. Uh, it discusses each of our contributions, our collaborative contributions uh, to what they will get and what we're trying to accomplish in that six month window. Uh, we also have then a renewable additional six month option for those people who are just loving what we're doing and say, there's even more, I want to make this even better. But we also have a starting place that we thought, well, people don't always know for everybody who's really listening to us and say, I'm not sure this is going to be the answer. I don't know yeah. if I have all those problems. So we created a program under $500 to be a starting combination sampler from both of us where they're getting some of my assessments, where they're getting our scorecards, where they're getting a call with each of us. Uh, and I do love a good heavy hors d'oeuvre. Yeah, and and we, yeah, I like that. And to where we're, our commitment is to provide one key practice breakthrough, depending on where they are in our discovery with them, so that it changes the game for them at under five hundred dollars. And at that point, they will know whether they should do something more with us. Amazing, amazing, Jessica. Did you want to add anything about the program itself? Well, I would just say we really, really emphasize on meeting each team where they're at and, and yeah. really tailoring the program to what their needs are. I mean, we offer a lot of things, both of us in our individual businesses. And the idea of coming together collectively on this is to really, you know, maximize yes. what we can each offer based on what they need. And so, you know, what it looks like is going to be different for every office, but essentially the support is every week there's a call with one of us, right? Whether they're wanting you know, more of me or more of Matthew. And, and it might, it might differ, right? The first month or two might be really focused on team development and culture and vision. And then they really want to start diving into getting out of insurance network. And then they can pull me in on that. So we really, we want to tailor it for each individual office. And um, the on-site visit again is flexible based on what their need is. If they're like, I feel like it's a, it's a mess. We need somebody to get here right away and give us you know, really actionable steps we can take to improve right now yeah. we can make that happen. If it's at the rapid response force. Yeah, yeah. If it's at the end of six months, let's see, let's have you come in and refine the things we've learned and see what's, what's going on. We can make that work too. So it's really tailored. Um, but we've, we've really thought through how to bring both of our expertise together to help elevate the practice in the way that they're wanting to, whether it's, you know, 
team focused. Usually that's the thing. That's what we love about it is it's, it's almost always, they want to improve the business of the dentistry. They want to make it more profitable, more efficient, but then also there's a team component there that we, I, I can give them all the strategies in the world to make that happen. But if the team's not on board, it's really difficult for that doctor to drive that through. So combining both really helps to maximize um, the efforts that they're making to improve everything. Absolutely. Well, we've talked about, you know, the quick start offering that you've put together, the full six month coaching program, which again can be extended depending on the needs of the practice. Um, where can where can folks go if they're interested and want to get started? Um, what's the the single best place? And, and like I said, uh, Dr. Norton and Jessica, I'm going to be sharing the links uh, for all of this in the show notes. But what's the what's the first thing, uh, the first step that dentists can take if they'd like to consult with you guys? There's a at that page that we were mentioning at peoplepluspurpose.com forward slash Norton Martin program there, they can read about the opportunity there. Then there is a button on there, uh, an orange button that says schedule a consult call. So we'll get on the phone. We'll talk more about what the options are, learn more about what their needs and concerns are and see if that's a good match. Sounds good. Sounds good. Jessica, if there was one thing you wanted to leave listeners with, if there's a dentist out there listening who may be facing some of these challenges with team or leadership or, um, you know, patient experience, what do you want to leave them with? I guess I want to leave them with hope that whatever they're- I was really with... hoping you were going to say that. <laughs> yes. Uh, whatever they're frustrated with, uh, we can help with that. We we There's so much experience in- in this collaboration um, and we know we can we can be of support and a benefit in whatever that frustration point is. So just know that there is another way to make it more enjoyable, better in general, have hope. That's great, that's great. Well, thank you both so much for being here. I've really enjoyed the conversation. I appreciate um, everything that you're doing. I think it's so critical and so necessary. And I encourage folks to check it out if they're so interested. And, and by the way, anyone listening today, thank you so much for joining us as well. I really appreciate you tuning in, so to speak, uh, to the podcast. I'm really excited to be doing this. And uh, if you enjoyed what you heard today, please, please, please take a moment and leave us a review, a rating, uh, maybe some comments on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you get this show. Um, I can't tell you how much it means to us. And it certainly means a lot to uh, the algorithm. So please go ahead and do that. I appreciate it. And Jessica and Dr. Norton, thank you so much for being here. I look forward to reconnecting with you in the future. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, it's been Dan. a pleasure. All right. Take care. You too.